here with my very first Breaking Bad Season 4 episode review video. Before I get into that, though, pretty important. If you are caught up to the point where I am in re-watching or watching Breaking Bad, or you're just not entirely sure, then you definitely need to take the initiative and pay attention to the episode's title, which, of course, I'll mention, as well as put in the description if that happens to be the case, and you find out that you're not caught up, it would be my recommendation that you don't watch this video any further to avoid any potential spoilers. And for all of you that are wondering, I've seen Breaking Bad many times, at least eight times. This might even be my 10th time watching this show. So join me and the Lucifer expert and Breaking Bad fan, Crazy Coffee Man, down in the comment section to discuss this awesome and amazing show. And we're both Dexter fans too, by the way. With that in mind, this will be Breaking Bad at Season 4, Episode 1. The title of this episode is called Box Cutter. And this will be my review reaction recap after just finishing watching the episode. So we start off with Gail Bedecker setting up the meth lab. Obviously, this all happens before the unfortunate events for Gail Bedecker at the end of Season 3 Breaking Bad, where he's opening boxes up with a box cutter. Gail tells Gus it's coming very, very well. Gail talks about the equipment being expensive, but he talks about the good quality. Uh, Gail tells Gus that he can guarantee a purity of 96%, a figure that he's very proud of. However, the other product is 99%. Gail is worried about having an inferior product, and Gus is, uh, says, for our purposes, 96% will be fine. And then Gus mentions concerns with this other person, Back to Jesse shooting Gail Bedecker. Man, this guy didn't deserve to die. He did nothing wrong. He was just an innocent bystander. Oh, well. We see Jesse sad and walk away after shooting Gail Bedecker. And then the call comes in about the shot, the shooting. Uh, it's from like a tenant at the building. Might even be the landlord at the building that he lived in. Victor shows up shortly after Jesse left. And Gail is actually dead. Uh, shot underneath the left eye. Victor leaves the building and sees Jesse sitting in his car. Remember, Jesse started using again, so he broke his sobriety. And Victor points the gun at Jesse and tells him to drive. Mike and Walt are staring at each other in the meth lab. Victor and Jesse arrive at the lab. Victor lets Mike know that Gail is dead. Victor also tells Mike people may have seen him at the scene. Well, they did see him at the scene. Marie stops by and wakes Skylar up to deliver another hospital bill or physical therapy bill of Hank's. Marie notices Walt's car is parked in the driveway. And Marie says, uh, howdy do to Mr. I'm not here. Marie is just a weird character sometimes. So Skylar gets in Walt's car and moves it three blocks down the street. Junior's ready for breakfast. It seems that his only purpose in the show Mainly, it's just to sit and eat and then say random things. Other than a few episodes where he lacked, actually did something outside of the house, Walter Jr. is just a prop for breakfast time. Just an observation. So, Mike made the call. Gus is uh, on the way. He knows what happened to Gail Bedecker. And Walt tells Mike we need to start a cook to hold to Gus's schedule. Come on, Mike. Let us cook. Isn't that what this is all about? Victor decides he's going to do the cook since he's seen them do it so many times. It's just a recipe. Now I'm jumping a little bit ahead of this because I've seen the episode many times. That's right, genius. Watch me. We ain't missing no cook, Victor says. Someone's banging on the door at Saul Goodman's office, and Huel is Saul's new bodyguard and is introduced, and Huel says we're closed. Francesca is reading a magazine while this is going on. Skylar White calls for Saul Goodman. Saul's searching his office for bugs. Francesca tells him uh, a few times, Skylar White is on the line. She tells Saul, Walt's nowhere to be found. Saul tells Skylar from the payphone outside, everything will be fine. Skylar goes to Walt's place. She gets a locksmith involved. And Adam, the locksmith, needs proof of re residence to get into Walter's Place and Skyler fakes like a panic attack, a panic attack, and needing medication. So he ends up letting her in, and says he'll mail her the bill. So Skyler 
pulled the fast one and was able to get into Walt's place, even though she doesn't live there. Skylar looks around Walt's place. Marie arrives home and Hank's busy putting bids on minerals online. Kind of like the mineral eBay store, so to speak. Marie calls Hank's minerals rocks and he gets pretty annoyed by that. He's still shitting himself, unfortunately. And Hank needs to use the bedpan while Marie's there. Walt tells Mike we should be wearing masks because it's a pandemic out there. Not, no, because they're doing chemicals and the chemicals are really going to fuck up your uh, your insides if you don't have the, the masks or the whatever they're called that were in the chemistry lab. And then Walt being cocky mumbles to Jesse, you forgot about the aluminum. Like saying things to Jesse about what Victor's going to forget during this cook that he's going to attempt to do. And then Gustavo Frank Gus has arrived. He just glares at Walt while Jesse still sits there quiet. Jesse hasn't said anything. Uh, not even bitch has come out of his mouth yet, which is his favorite line. Bitch. Gus goes to change into something more suitable for the lab because he's got a suit on. So he takes his sport coat off and his uh, his dress shirt, and his shoes off. And Walt tells Gus that Gail didn't deserve what happened to him at all. This is on you, Gus. Not me, not Jesse. You're the one that most likely gave the order for the kid to die. Not saying that he said that, but that's I'm guessing why this is on him. Without us, you have no one to make your product. Victor mentions he knows every step to their cook, as it's just a recipe, and Walt's getting irritated with Victor's recipe slash cook talk. He tells Gus, without us, you have nothing. And then, all of a sudden, Gus slits Victor's throat with a box cutter, the title of the episode, and Victor bleeds out. Walt just stares, or Gus just stares at Walt, and Victor is dead. Gus drops the box cutter. And then Gus goes to put his dress clothes back on and walks up the stairs. And then he stops, turns around and says, well, get back to work. And leaves. Like nothing happened. Well, get back to work. <laughs> like nothing happened. Seriously. That was pretty classic. Mike, Jesse, and Walt. Well, initially Jesse and Walt. But then Mike finally helps out and they dispose of Victor's body. They put him in like a, 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 toe, a tube or tub. Um, and uh, a barrel tub, whatever you want to call it, and put the acid in there. And all the evidence that was used to kill him, like the box cutter, they put that in there as well. And Mike asks if you're sure it will do the job, and Jesse finally says something, trust us. The barrel is put on a truck with all the what what's left of Victor, the liquid that's left, and Walt and Jesse mop up all the blood. Walt and Jesse go to Denny's. Yummy. Jesse has some pancakes. I love Denny's pancakes. Uh, I've always liked them. It's been a while since I've had them, like a couple of years. I uh, used to go to Denny's all the time with my grandma and uh, don't anymore. So Walt tells Jesse he did the only thing that he could do. I hope you understand that. Walt says, at the first opportunity, Gus will kill us. Jesse tells Walt they're all on the same page now. And then Walt gets a cab ride home. Skyler comes out and tells him about moving his car three blocks, three blocks down so Junior wouldn't ask any questions. And then photos are being taken of Gail Bedecker's house and the body and the surrounding areas and the, the lab notes book, which we saw in the opening scene with notes that he made, um, is right next to the body. Well, it's on the table right next to the body, but up higher. So the body's here, the table's right here. And that's what ends the episode. So pretty crazy start to the season. Uh, I'm going to give the episode a 9.0 out of 10. It's a little bit lower of a score than the average people give it on IMDb. I always look at IMDb for stuff. Uh, just thought it was a little slow, but it was good. The calculated stuff was good. And then as far as my characters, the episode where Skylar definitely has it for the females, hands down with her trickery of the uh, locksmith guy. For the males, I mean, he didn't say a lot, but actions speak louder than words. Gustavo Frank Gus is definitely one of the males of the char one of the male characters of the episode, and then Walt with the talk, "You have no one, no one to cook your product." All that stuff was great. So take your pick between Walt and Gus, and of course Skyler. So you've heard everything that I have to say. Season four of Breaking Bad is 
I'm sure is my favorite season of Breaking Bad. Last time I watched it, it was, and I'm sure it will be this time. So let me know what you think. If you're a fan of Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, or El Camino Breaking Bad movie, and want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, please consider Hulk, sm Hulk smashing that like button, share the video with a friend, put this video on any one of your social media platforms. Don't forget to sound off in the comment section about what your thoughts are on this episode of Breaking Bad. Talk to me and Crazy Coffee Man about Breaking Bad, about Dexter, about Lucifer. What would you rate the episode? And whom would be your male or female character of the episode? Or you can do both, whatever works for you. And then last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button, subscribe to the channel, join the team, show your damn support, and be a part of something special. And J-Dev will return.